Well, it's one of President Obama's biggest foreign policy achievements, and it's now in danger of being thrown out. I'm talking about the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. Signed back in April, both by President Dmitry Medvedev and President Obama, the New START Treaty has yet to be ratified. Now, up until now, there have been some grumblings from Republicans who say the treaty, which reduces nuclear stockpiles by about 30 percent, would limit the ability by the U.S. to set up missile defenses. Now, members of the Duma, Russia's parliament, say if this is not ratified in the next few weeks, the whole thing could be scrapped. It was enough to send President Obama front and center today, urging lawmakers to stop messing around. This is not uh, a traditionally Democratic <laughs> or Republican issue, but rather uh, uh, an issue of American national security, and I am hopeful that uh, we can get that done uh, before we leave and, and send a strong signal uh, to Russia that we are serious about uh, reducing nuclear arsenals, but also send a signal to the world that we're serious about nonproliferation. So what's the problem here? Joining me now to talk more about this is Ivan Eland, senior fellow with the Independent Institute. And Ivan, what is the problem here? What are some of the issues? I know before we have heard from many conservatives, um, people kind of saying, giving different reasons for why they didn't want it. Now we're hearing from Russia. Tell us what's going on. Well, I think the Russians are waiting to see what the U.S. does because I think it's more iffy to get the uh, ratification in the U.S. because U.S. Uh, Parliament or U.S. Congress is not uh, is in sync in, with the government as it is in Russia. So, and the, and what the Republicans will want is a payoff, essentially, not envelopes of cash. That's illegal. But what they want is more money for the nuclear. Uh, complex that uh, builds, designs, and uh, produces uh, nuclear weapons. And uh, this is a heavy subsidy toward uh, these uh, um, the nuclear weapons industry, defense contractors, et cetera. And all the major Republicans uh, who are, have not opposed it, they're just saying, well, we have to see. Well, if this modernization budget is what we need. And Obama has already pledged to uh, to sink a bunch of money into the nuclear uh, modernization infrastructure, of course, which is not really needed. It's more of a subsidy or a uh, boondoggle. But uh, the Republicans are trying to up the price and say, well, you know, if you want this ratified before the wave of more Republicans comes to town uh, in, uh, you know, after the first of the year, then you better uh, come up with some more money for the infrastructure of, of the nuclear weapons. And certainly we've heard, we, we shouldn't say all Republicans, because we've heard from Henry Kissinger and uh, Senator Dick Lugar, who's the, the chairman of this committee, um, they're in favor of it happening now. Another one of the most outspoken people in favor of this getting done, ASAP, Senator John Kerry. Uh, we did reach out to his office, and um, we heard back from one of his, his spokespeople, uh, and this is what she said. She said, failure to approve New START as soon as possible would not only weaken American security, it would undermine the spirit of bipartisanship that has characterized previous arms control deliberations. In September, committee members from both sides of the aisle came together to act in the best interest of our national security. Now it's our now it is the Senate's turn. Uh, now, the spirit of bipartisanship, that's certainly something that sounds uh, pretty interesting to me, caught my attention, because that's not something that we've really seen, especially in light of this sort of nasty election of bipartisanship. Um, and when we talk about the START Treaty, I mean, this is one of President Obama's biggest accomplishments. So is this just the Republicans coming out and sort of living up to their reputation of the party of no, wanting to make sure that President Obama does not get to stand next to uh, such an amazing feat? I think the Republicans in this case are the party of Mo, and that is more money for their weapon system program. And I think the treaty will pass. It's just that uh, they're trying to jack up the price. And Luger is a tremendous uh, bipartisan uh, guy, and he is it's, his prestige is very high in recommending that the treaty pass. He's the ranking minority member on the Foreign Relations Committee, which already passed the treaty. And I think his uh, Republicans respect him, and he's certainly no uh, right-wing Tea Party uh, person. When those people don't come to town until January, so I think it is true that the treaty has to be ratified before they get here. But the, the truly conservative Republicans are not uh, uh, here in mass until 
uh, the new Congress. And so there's time to do this. And I think uh, Obama will just have to uh, work the backroom deal. And I think he will get the 67 votes. It's a high, it's a high hurdle. It's the highest hurdle that is ever faced by anything in the Congress, a, a foreign treaty. But I think it's going to pass. And I think the U.S. Uh, Russian relationship has improved. And I think that will help also. And of course, if the treaty passes, that will be part of a continuing an improvement. So one leads to the other. It's kind of a, a cycle. But I think it's an upward cycle, not a downward cycle. And I think it will pass during the lame duck session. So you th I mean, uh, lame duck session, I mean, this was signed back in April. It's been more than six months since then. So, you, I mean, basically, you're saying you think it could pass in the next couple of weeks because we have, you know, uh, two to three weeks before they go on vacation and then the new ones come into town. Well, there are other things, but this is pretty important. And I think that they may not have to have that big a debate on it if the price is paid uh, and, and this money comes is jacked up for the nuclear program. And I think that's what will happen because Obama, this is a centerpiece of his foreign policy agenda. And after all, he's mired in two wars, so he needs something to burnish his foreign policy credentials, especially when he's going to have to move more to foreign policy since he's going to get less done at home. So I think all the factors are pushing for the treaty. Well, he certainly needs it but, uh, and, and wants it. Um, but the question is, will uh, the Republicans allow it to happen? Ivan Elin, senior fellow at the Independent Institute.